Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity of presenting this work here today. In this talk, we present convolutional neural networks of HNE stain biopsy images that accurately quantify histological features of NASH. And this is joint work between Citro, Gilead Sciences, and investigators at UCSD, Virginia Commonwealth University, Oxford University, and INOVA for Pax Medical Camp. At Incitro, we aim to integrate machine learning and biology at scale to enable better medicines for patients in need. So this slide provides a high level overview of how the Incitro's pipeline looks like. We start by analyzing human level data. And from these analyses, we can learn insights into the biology of a disease. For example, we can learn about candidate cell types, gene targets, pathways, and genetic biomarkers implicated with the disease. We then leverage these insights to build in vitro models of human disease, which we in turn use for target identification using modified screens and target validation. Non-alcoholic pseudohepatitis is one of our disease focus areas. We realize that the quantitative analysis of NASH histology provides a great opportunity to learn new disease biology. The activity of NASH and the severity of fibrosis can be assessed using the NASH Clinical Research Network Activity Score and the ISHEC Fibrosis Score. However, quantitative analysis of these metrics are challenged by the low resolution categorization of disease. To overcome this limitation, we aimed to extract quantitative scores from liver biopsy imaging data using machine learning. Specifically, we train convolutional neural networks to predict the pathology scores that are discrete in nature from HNE liver biopsy imaging data. And by doing so, the networks could learn how to extract continuous scores from these process, for these processes. We, we then demonstrate that the extracted continuous scores empower downstream association analysis with molecular and clinical data. We here provide an overview of the convolutional neural network architecture that we employ. So we started from HNE state or whole slide images. We broke them down into tiles. These tiles were then provided as inputs to a convolutional neural network that could extract tile level features. These tile level features were then aggregated within biopsy level features. And finally, the biopsy level features were used to predict the pathology scores. And this architecture was fully trained end to end. Now, an important detail here is in the way we aggregate time level features within biopsy level features. Specifically, we used an attention based pooling mechanism that gives the flexibility to the model of focusing on specific tiles when scoring a process. Additionally, the model can focus on different sets of tiles for different processes. So uh, for example, it could use a set of tiles for scoring steatosis, but a different set of tiles for scoring fibrosis and so on and so forth. We analyzed 4,641 HNE stained host lead images of liver biopsy from five Gilead Nash clinical trials. The resulting aggregate data set contains about 2 million tiles and included patients with different stages of NAFL and fibrosis. Importantly, all the slides considered in this study were scored by a single pathologist. In the stream analysis, we also considered blood biomarkers associated with liver dysfunction and fibrosis from Stellar 3 clinical trial and genetic data from Stellar 3 and Stellar 4 clinical trials. The convolutional neural network was trained on 4,178 slides and evaluated on an independent set of 463 slides. Importantly, these evaluation slides were from different patients in different clinical centers. So we here show a violin plot for each of the scores, where on the y-axis we have the predicted continuous score from our model, 
while on the x-axis we have the pathology score. And the agreement between the predicted and the pathology scores is assessed using schema correlation. So as you can see, we achieved um, an accuracy that is in the range of previously reported cross-pathologist agreement. Also note that the predictions from ISHA score here are, are obtained solely from h &E stain biopsy imaging, while typically pathologists use trichome staining for scoring fibrosis. Perhaps more importantly, thanks to the attention mechanism we implemented, we can now go back and see which tiles were looked at by the model for scoring the different processes. And as you can see by visual assessment, the attention mechanism selected features that align with those used by a pathologist. The convolution neural networks also capture tile heterogeneity with different tiles used for different scores. So here we show a TSNI map of tile representations. In this plot, each point is a tile. And as you can see, uh, a large fraction of the tiles are deemed unimportant by the models, meaning they were not used for scoring any of the processes. You can also see that the uh, tiles that were used for scoring fibrosis, inflammation, and cetosis live in different regions of this manifold. We also assess the overlap between the sets of the top 10% of the tiles for each score, and we found we observed very low overlap in the top tiles used for steatosis, lobular inflammation, and fibrosis, while we observed a much higher overlap between the top tiles used for lobular inflammation and hepatocyte ballooning. We then assessed the ability to predict 60 nash related serum markers using linear regression. Specifically, we assess the ability to predict the biomarkers uh, using a linear model, either considering the pathology scores as inputs to the model, or considering the continuous scores as inputs to the model. And the agreement between the predicted and the observed biomarker values was assessed using Spearman correlation, which is the unit here on both the y and the x axis. Also note, in this plot, each point is a biomarker. So as you can see, the continuous scores improve predictions over the pathology scores for most biomarkers with significant differences observed for seven biomarkers, including the enhanced liver fibrosis score. We also performed a genome-wide association study of disease progression defined using the continuous scores in stellar patient. And this analysis yielded two genome-wide significant variants and several suggestive loci. Importantly, no significant locus was retrieved when conducting the same analysis, but on the pathology scores rather than on the continuous scores. So the results from this genetic association study are shown here using the Manhattan plot, where um, each point is a variant. On the x-axis, we have the position of the variant, while on the y-axis, we have the minus log 10 p-value of association between the variant and disease progression. And we are now conducting a series of post gwas analysis to find map variants and to map genes and pathways genetically implicated with disease progression. Now, these results are overall quite remarkable. Using the continuous scores, we were able to find genome-wide significant hits of disease progression in a clinical trial setting, despite the low sample size. We presented convolutional neural networks that could predict Nash histological scores with similar accuracy to cross pathologist agreement. And uh, the networks presented in the study, they were solely trained based on biopsy level labels. We did not use any pixel level annotation. The learned histological scores provide greater resolutions and they empowered association analysis with clinical labels and generated data. This work provides a proof of principle for the ability of machine learning to empower downstream association analysis, which can potentially lead to the identification of candidate targets 
and the discovery of new disease biology. And with that, I'd like to conclude. I'd like to thank the fantastic NASH core team at Incitra, and specifically Mikhail Barakat, who conducted a large fraction of the analysis that I presented today. Matthew Albert, the head of the NASH program at Incitra, and Daphne Kohler, as founder and visionary leader of Incitra. I'd also like to thank collaborators at Gilead Sciences and investigators at UCSD, Virginia Commonwealth University, Oxford University, and I know about Fairfax Medical Campus. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>